Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Wilson, the Chief Curator at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, and thanks for joining us for another episode of A New Way to Museum. One of the many roles that I have at the Sternberg is actually the curator of geology. One of the first videos that I made in our YouTube series was looking at some of our meteorites from our meteorite collection within our geology holding. So I wanted to revisit our geology collection and point out a couple other interesting uh, interesting um, uh, uh, specimens that we have related to meteorites, but they are not meteorites themselves. They're called tektites. So while meteorites are pieces of rock, sometimes they're encased in, in ice and that makes them a comet, but pieces of rock that have an extraterrestrial origin. So they come from space and then they enter Earth's atmosphere and impact Earth. And then we can go, if they don't all melt up through uh, the atmosphere entry, we can go out and collect them. And I'll show a couple of examples from our collection in a minute, or you can go back and revisit that, that video from probably about a year ago now. But tektites have a completely different origin. So when that meteorite hits Earth, it then causes a huge amount of heat and energy to go into Earth. When that meteorite impacts areas that might have a lot of silica content, so sand or granite or, or uh, uh, quartzite rocks or even soil and sediment that have a lot of quartz in it, we get a different type of kind of melting event where that sediment or rock is thrown up into the atmosphere and it can either vaporize or melt. And then it re-solidifies upon re-entry into the atmosphere into these little knobs. And these little knobs are what we call tektites. I have some examples from our collection uh, set out here. And you can see that these come in a variety of, of shapes and sizes. They're typically pebble, but can be much smaller. And then they're typically these dark brown to black. The interesting things about these is that these are glass, and glass is made of quartz. So the same way that we have glass window panes in our homes and cars and office buildings, those are made of, a, of the, the mineral called quartz. Tektites are also quartz as well. So when you get the, the melting or vaporization of earth materials that's then thrown up into the atmosphere, comes back down, that's what forms tektites. So while meteorites have an extraterrestrial origin, tektites have a terrestrial origin. There are a couple of other geologic uh, uh, specimens that we have that can resemble tektites. So one of them is meteorites themselves. And I'm gonna show a couple of meteorites, but I am going to put on gloves. Uh, meteorites are largely iron. They have a lot of, of metal in them. And as we know, metal can rust and, and corrode. So we try to make little micro habitats for our meteorites to, to stay in so, they can, so they're not introduced to unnecessary oxygen or water. And then if we ever do handle them, we like to make sure our hands are clean and wear gloves so that we're not um, putting any of our oils from our hands and skin on them. I have a big iron meteor right here. So even though it is a not as large rock, it is very, very heavy. So this is at least 20 pounds. Um, and we can see that it has a lot of rust on it. I have my little silica packs. And that's one of the things that we look at. We can look at the age or date the age of these meteorites, as well as look at their chemical content. And this is one of the big things that differentiates a meteorite from the tektite and gives us an indication into their origin, knowing that meteorites are coming from outer space. And then tektites have a very different chemical signal, showing that they actually have a terrestrial or an Earth origin. We can get into some of our cut and polished meteorites, which are always very fun to look at, to really just see that iron content. So it's very obvious that it really just like, looks like a sheet of metal, and because these are iron and nickel, and really are just metal, which is why they're so heavy. Remember, the tektites are made of glass, so very different types of minerals and elements that make up the two, uh, the two different types of, of specimens. 
Another type of, of specimen that we have in our geology collections that can look like tektites is obsidian. So obsidian is a type of volcanic glass. So it is still glass, similar to our tektites, but even the surface characteristics look very different. We can do detailed analysis on these different materials to look at other differences as well. So we see differences in the actual elements that make up that glass, the tektites, because you're getting soil and other materials like maybe shales in addition to sands and quartz mixed in, you don't have the same chemical composition between a, a volcanic glass and a tektite. Uh, you also have different physical uh, inclusions within the, the volcanic glass showing its volcanic origin. And then another big difference is volcanic glass actually has water in it. We can heat this glass up and parts of it will actually vaporize as water versus tektites pretty much lack almost all traces of water. So we can look at the chemical compositions and the physical characteristics, what happens under heat and pressure to really understand how these tektites, tektites form. One of the really fun things to look at as well is all of the different shapes that we get associated with these different tektites. Because remember, this is going to be melted earth that's flung up into, this, into the atmosphere or out of the atmosphere. And then as it falls back down towards earth, it starts to cool and solidify. So we can get these fun tiered shaped um, uh, nodules that you can see as they would be falling back into earth. We get some of these flattened ones into kind of little pancakes as they fall. Um, and we can even get these almost boomerang ones that probably had a little bit of rotation as they spin. The shape and size is going to have to do with the velocity of the impactor, so when the meteorite hits Earth, as well as what type of material um, is flung up into the atmosphere, how far it goes, how fast it goes. All of these can relate to the different size and shapes of tektites. There have been a lot of, uh, or there have been several different hypotheses over the, over the last couple of hundred years regarding the origin of tektites. The scientific community pretty much agrees that they have a terrestrial origin, that it is a meteorite hitting Earth material, melting that, throwing it up into the atmosphere, and then when that falls back down to Earth, we get tektites. Up until the 60s, there was a competing hypothesis that maybe tektites had a lunar origin, so an origin from the moon, where maybe it was a volcanic eruptions on the moon or ejecta from when a meteorite hit the moon and flung material towards Earth. As it entered Earth's atmosphere and melted, we got these tektites. And it really wasn't until, until the um, lunar exploration, the Apollo missions, when we sent uh, astronauts to the moon to collect rocks and bring them back that we could actually test some of these hypotheses. So now that we have moon rocks that we can look at their physical and chem chemical composition, we understand that tektites are much more similar to materials that we find on Earth versus any sort of crustal materials that we find on the moon. So again, growing support or pretty much unanimous support now that we have for a terrestrial origin for our tektites. So some of these cool things that we can find that are part of these bigger events of meteor or meteorite impacts, we don't find them with all impacts because it's gonna depend on what that actual meteorite hits, so the type of rock that's melted and thrown up into the atmosphere. But when we do find them, they're fun and it's cool to learn about them. So thanks for joining us for another episode. If you like this and want to see more similar content, hit like and follow below. Feel free to leave comments and we'll get back to them. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching, and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.